Hello everyone, my name is Trevor, I go by the Mr. Trails, welcome to the channel, and welcome to another experimental test video. First and foremost, I want to apologize for the audio issues from the last video, and that are going to be in this video. When I record with OBS, my audio goes to crap, but when I record it with Audacity, it's perfectly fine. I downloaded a new OBS, I still have some settings to import over, but we gotta get this video out to you guys today, so I'm still gonna be rocking the older OBS. And something that I failed to mention in the last video, which I'm usually very quick to do with experimental videos, is is that these changes are not set in stone. They are not guaranteed to get into the game at their current levels or current strengths or anything like that. So after reading comments on here and comments on Reddit, it's apparent that by far the biggest concern everybody is having is attack speed right now. And I do very much agree with this point. While we do have a Omni cell that is relating to having constant attack speed, I don't feel like attack speed is something that should be limited to just one of these Omni cells. And of course, the recent nerf to the attack speed of the Blitz Tonic, as well as the Ember Main Lantern tap no longer existing. This is something that should be addressed, and they will address based on all of this feedback surrounding it. And another thing I'm seeing a lot of people being concerned about is the inability to run Discipline were half HP with Iceborne. And Iceborne is still going to be better at those lower HP values. But the points to these changes was to make it so that being at half HP doesn't really matter unless you are running the Discipline subclass, and the only function of being half HP is to make you closer to being one shot all the time. But the point of the Discipline Omni Cell is to give you a high risk, high reward playstyle, and we're going to see just how high that reward can get to in today's video. And another thing I'm seeing a lot of is that this is pretty much a big nerf to damage in general, but the Omni Cells are really strong. We'll sh I'll show you how strong the Discipline Omni Cell is today, whether it be for casual play or for serious play. If you haven't actually played with these yet, I could see how it's just all inherently negative to you just looking at it from a glance, but aside from the attack speed concerns, this is not this is not really a nerf to Slayers. This is honestly pretty huge buff to Slayers. But this video isn't supposed to be just about discussion and building. This is going to be the video where we focus on actual gameplay here. And I was going to do the majority of my building today with Catalyst, but after seeing a lot of concerns that, you know, you need Catalyst to have any attack speed whatsoever, we're going to do that without Catalyst today. And a big thing here is that most of the attack speed now is conditional, but we'll get into that. So Conduit, you will be able to use Conduit and your Lantern Hold at the start of every fight because you're going to have to take the time to traverse to each fight and the Lantern Hold is on a cooldown, meaning you will be able to start every fight off with Conduit. Then you can reduce the cooldown of those Lantern Holds with other cells like Etheric Attunement. These are diminishing returns, by the way. This 50% doesn't cut it from 30 seconds to 15 seconds. It cuts it from 30 seconds to 20 seconds because it's 1 over 1.5. And then outside of those two lantern holds, you know, you've got Assassin's Frenzy. If you're going for the stagger lock, this is where this cell would come into play. And then if you've got Evasive Fury, where you can't stagger lock a behemoth, that's when you would use Evasive Fury instead. Enough of just this talking. I'm going to go ahead and try to explain some of these things as we're actually fighting the behemoths. So you can see just how, how much damage the Discipline Parry did right there. And you know, that's going to be giving me a ton of crit damage. Okay, so that counted as a parry, even though it still took damage there. Something I wanted to point out about the Discipline Omni Cell is that there's no timer on these stacks of Discipline. And, you know, there's nothing exactly stopping you right now from just staying at three stacks the whole time meaning you just get plus 52.5 percent uh crit damage now because we don't have discipline built in anymore you know that is going to affect your crit chance because you're only going to have the 12 percent when you have cunning and the stuff from the slayer's path but what you can do to combat that is to run pulse instead and this might actually make the case for pulse a bit stronger here so here i'm going to be running pulse instead of our cunning and we'll see just how crazy it is to have this is 67.5 percent crit damage with our stacks of discipline here and we'll get a crit guaranteed every fifth hit so pulse is actually looking a lot stronger under this sort of uh this sort of scheme we have here so I'm moving from the Paradox Breaks to Hades Reach here, just so we don't have an abundance of Elder and Primal Behemoths, like, messing with, you know, this testing stuff here. 
but I also did change uh, one of the etheric attunements to an evasive fury just to make sure we actually have some of the attack speed. Oh, and even like armor pieces count as a uh, as a part break under this condition, so. It's actually pretty solid. Alright, I parried one, the other one just went through me. Wow. You can see how much damage the lantern did though. <laughs> we are back up to three stacks of discipline. Let us see how we chonk this Valo. So, Heroic Behemoths are now not going to really react to part breaks in this update. Or I guess as much. I guess there are some that will still, some part breaks that they will still react to. But yeah. See, I'm still, I'm still able to stagger lock even a Valamir, like with, without tonics. You're still able to stagger lock. <laughs> so once you activate like the disciplined state, um. Like, that's pretty much game over for the Behemoth, and that's uh, that's something I think is somewhat positive, at least. You know, you, you do... You do have to ramp it up. Um, but it is pretty solid. And Evasive Fury does count for when you gain a stack of Discipline, so... And it's pretty similar to a normal dodge in terms of the iframes. So there's not really going to be a huge timing issue there. Alright, so let's start off this fight with four stacks of Discipline. See, like, that, that fight took no time at all. When you start off the fight with four stacks of discipline, like, honest, that, that's without tonics. That is without tonics. Like, that is not a nerf in any way to, like, our damage. It's just, you're changing what cells you're using, but there's no, there's no true nerf, really, in terms of, you know, the Slayers as a whole. So I think that that combat footage did a decent job of demonstrating that even without tonics, you could still get a decent amount of attack speed. You do have to, you know, invest in it a little bit, but keep in mind that discipline isn't going to be in your perk economy anymore. So you basically have already freed up that slot to put extra attack speed onto your build. So I think that's enough of the discipline omni cell. We're gonna go ahead and check out Wind Fury. This is probably the weakest one out of all of these, I would have to say, just, you know, from my initial reactions to it. Um, yes, it's going to give you extra attack speed. You can have a constant attack speed boost with this, so you might be able to, s you might just swap these to like an extra berserker or something. But, um, you know, and you might, you, you would really want to run Pulse on Discipline, um, as opposed to Cunning, I feel, in this new build. But we'll probably run Cunning on this, and then maybe swap Evasive Fury to a, another Berserker. And, um, you know, we're going to have constant attack speed on Wind Fury, and we'll, we'll actually be at full HP um, and have all of this attack speed benefit. You do have to dodge attacks. To, uh, to get the attack speed rolling. That combined with uh, Evasive Fury is going to be interesting. But you can, you can get a lot of attack speed on these builds still. It's just coming 
Like, you, you just have to dodge one attack, you know? But, you know, the con having constant free attack speed isn't that important, right? Like, once you, like, you literally just dodge an attack or you break apart and then, bam, attack speed. It's, it's not completely different from what it was before. It is different, sure. But it's not, it's not game-breaking. Right, uh, I should probably dodge a few attacks from this Hellion. Alright, so here we're at full attack speed from Wind Fury. And dodging through another attack does refresh the Wind Fury duration as well as using the Lantern Tap. So one thing you can do is to, like, even between fights, Keep an eye on the timer. It's hard to tell exactly when it's uh, when it's done at this point. Um, which I would hope they would change the HUD color to make it like more visible. But I mean, it's it's pretty good. It, it's it's solid to have the constant attack speed on this. I don't think it outrules you know discipline. Discipline is still. Like, we're going from best case to worst case, I think, from just comparing these two. So what I've tried to do here for our Iceborne Omni Cell is literally just make face tank build literally what even is the dodge button, right? So we got Conduit, we got Cunning, we got Rage Tenacious, we've got Attunement 3, Frenzy 3, Naka King 3, Overpower 3. And uh, I'm literally just not even going to press my dodge button, and we'll see how this goes. A swap to Axe. We're running Scar and Axe, uh, you know, Overcharged Cylinder, that stuff. And, you know, the one change I'm going to make to Axe is, you know, we, we used to say run Ember Main Lantern on Axe, but we're going to probably say just run Strike Lantern on Axe now. Probably be more beneficial than, more beneficial than the other damage that you can get otherwise. And now you can actually run Conduit Strike Lantern without it being Super Papega. Alright, so we're going to start off our fight. You just don't have to dodge, man. I should probably there should probably be some sturdy on this build. Alright, so you know, my build here isn't going to be perfect for this, obviously. Um, I'm not completely used to these changes yet, and we will, you know, we'll get used to changes as they come along. But, you know, even these kind of builds, like... ...is dealing half of Hellion's damage before it even stands up. And then bang, he's on the ground again. And I could have intentionally set myself on fire to activate rage. I mean, this doesn't feel much different at all. You know, invincibility myself. If you actually dodge, this does get better. I'm trying not to dodge, but... Like, these combat times aren't bad at all. It's not different. Like, like it's not different in terms of combat time. It's not like we got a major nerf. You know, it's just... 
the the conditions for your combat have changed. I feel like the majority of people given the feedback right now are people who aren't actually testing and just saying, wait, where's all the attack speed? Without actually playing the game with the with the new stuff, because you can use Assassin's Frenzy on a full HP build. And you can use it on a low HP build too. And you don't need to run tonics to have any attack speed. As I'm showing here, like, with Axe, for sure, you kind of want to run Shrike Lantern. But you are probably likely to do that anyway. But yeah, you can see here what I was talking about in the previous video. Like, I am limited to 25 stacks of... Scarn shield at least being 1000 shield um so scarn ue did get a bit of a nerf in that sense but there you know with discipline involved now there are ways to get 100 percent crit chance without using tenacious as well so i mean for our bastion ami cell it's pretty much going to be same same sort of concept but we're going to make sure we don't take damage so we can actually use our shields to deal out some extra damage so we are going to have uh some our max health reduced so we aren't going to get as much damage from our tenacious but that should be fine. We're going to be running Conduit, Cunning, Pred, Tenacious, 3 Attunement, 3 Frenzy, 3 KOK, -Okay, and 3 Overpower. Shrike Lantern, still the Skarnax. We'll see how this goes. I mean, it'll it'll probably be just the same thing, you know? It will probably just not be all that different. It's just like the conditions for which you get the same power, the same DPS, are just going to be slightly different than they were before. I see something here from the Bastion Omnicell is, I'm already starting this fight off with 530. So bang, we already have a decent amount. See, we, we got good attack speed, we got a ton of shield, and now bang. Look at how much damage. It's like a second axe sheet that I just had from Bastion. We're gonna get up to a good amount of shield here. Bang, 1500. Smash. Another stagger. It's pretty solid. Part broken. Easy attack speed, easy stagger. Easy extra shield. He's on the ground. We don't have to worry about it. Smash. That can crit, so I kind of got scammed, but... And bang. Stagger locked Hellion. No tonics. Pretty easily. The logistics of doing that would be slightly... You know, I am level 20. The logistics of doing that would only be slightly different if I wasn't level 20. Like, honestly, all these changes, they feel fine. They don't, they don't feel too much like changes. But they're enough to make to make things a bit more interesting. So I guess that's basically going to do it for this video. We basically just checked out all the Omni cells, and you know we made builds that are you know they're regular, they're fine, they're they're pretty much in line with what we already have. It's just some of them will sometimes, some of the time, have slightly less attack speed, and then to get that attack speed that you already had, you just dodge one attack. Like, it, it, things aren't that different with all of these changes. I, for one, love the positive change of not having to, you know, put discipline onto my build, but I can already have it 
you know, ingrained in my gear. You know, the effect of what Discipline and Iceborne do are different now, but it's it's in line with how the playstyle was anyway. Discipline's supposed to be high risk, high reward. It wasn't really high risk under our previous system, especially when you combined it with Iceborne, which is supposed to be, you know, I don't want to die. You can pretty, pretty comfortably not die against heroic escalations with just Iceborne on the on the bill. Yeah, that's gonna basically do it for this video. I at the very least just hope that some of you who were very negative about this saying like this is completely breaking the game, this is going to make the game unplayable, it's like it's not it's not that much different from what it was before and we get some amazing passive benefits that will have active all of the time and free up some of our perk economy. But you guys know the deal, consider subscribing if you aren't already. Head over to the Twitch, we'll either do this today or we will do try carries would probably maybe do both maybe a little bit of both but i didn't really get to heroic escalations in this video there are some changes that we're going to go over on those um but we'll probably go in with like Heltrix or cosplay and we'll check those out in another video but thank you guys for watching like the video i have been trevor i go by the mr trails i'll catch you guys next time